What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 wrestling matches ruined by the fans. Now, there are certain cases where the fans' interaction can uh, enhance a match. Most of the time, it does enhance the match or storyline. But there are certain times where maybe the fans don't care about a particular match. And they say, screw it. We're just going to, you know, take over this match with our chance, with our, our reactions, or no reaction. They just sit there and don't say nothing. Me, personally, I think it's kind of the worst when the wrestlers are, you know, doing their thing and maybe, you know, the fans are tired of seeing this match. Or maybe it's like the, the 20th rematch in a row, and they just sit there, and they don't say nothing. They don't yay they don't boo they don't even throw out chance they just sit there and as a viewer watching at home it just makes the match it don't matter what they doing they can be doing all types of flips and dives they can put out a flaming table if the crowd is not invested or they don't care the match won't work on television so but yeah, we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on our channel. Let's get right Where into this. Where would the wrestling business be without you fans? Probably in the state it was in in 2020 and 2021. Filmed Facts. in the WWE Performance Center to deafening silence while we all contemplated our choices in entertainment while we watched it. What a horrible existence that would be. But at the very least, none of the Global matches time. filmed like that would make it onto this very specific list. Yes, every so often there are matches that do not in fact benefit from a hot crowd, but rather are crippled by an apathetic gathering of fans more interested in entertaining themselves than watching the match they paid to see not gonna lie not all of the matches on this list are at the fault of the fans i don't know who's gonna pay to see the first match on this list for the 11 billionth time but some of the others yeah you ruined it so good job i'm tempest hailing from parts fun known and these are 10 wrestling matches ruined by the fans and before we get on with our list make sure of course that you like this video subscribe and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it and make sure before we get into this video i always give fans the benefit of the doubt in certain situations if you guys remember the horrible times where monday night raw would be filled with rematch after rematch after rematch after rematch there's only so many times you can see someone face each other week after week before you say i don't care so i can understand those moments especially when they go to those uh those towns that not really too big on wrestling like that and the fans are just sitting there. Crickets. I understand. I saw this 10 weeks in a row. But I also get what he's probably going to be showing some clips of people who are, you know, trying to give a, a fresh, entertaining match. And the fans just say, ah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Make sure you check out the plethora of year-end content right here on Parts Fun Known. Because I know none of you are the wrestling fans that ruined any of these matches. You're all just good boys and girls. You subscribe to Parts Fun Known. Number 10. John Cena versus Randy Orton, Royal Rumble 2014. Uh. The 2014 Royal Rumble match itself was infamous for the crowd's revolt when it became clear that their favorite, Daniel Bryan, wasn't even going to be in the match, let alone win it. Still, you can make a pretty strong case that it wasn't the audience who ruined that match, but rather the failure of WWE to realize that its fan base would only accept one outcome. Maybe yep. WWE hadn't got it into their heads at that point that that was what the fans wanted, but perhaps they should have, considering they practically shouted it into a megaphone during the previous match. Facts. I don't know who WWE thought was looking to see John Cena and Randy Orton wrestle on pay-per-view again at the 2014 Rumble. They'd said bragging rights 2009 was the last time. Do stipulations mean nothing to you people? Nope, Before the wasn't. bell even rang, there were chants of Daniel Bryan, and not even 15 seconds in, the people were chanting boring. No yep. one was giving this match a chance with chants of Randy Savage, Y2J, We Want Divas. You know how bad... Bro, <laughs> that crowd... That was a different crowd. I forgot what city that crowd was in. I'm not sure. I want to say it's Philly. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just remember that crowd for that rumble. It was only one thing and one thing that mattered. Daniel Bryan. That's all people cared about. And plus, John Cena, Randy Orton, it kind of got stale. We, we just, okay, we get it. <laughs> all right, we got it, guys. You don't have to fight each other all the time. We get it. You gotta not want to see a match to chant We Want Divas in 2014. That's Daniel Bryan, at the very least, got into the main event of WrestleMania yes. in the end. But Christ, can you not go back and watch this match for any reason beyond seeing the fans tear it to shreds? Yep. Number nine, 
Batista versus Alberto Del Rio, Elimination Chamber 2014. Smithers, are they booing me? No, sir, they're chanting Bootista. Bootista. <laughs> Except this crowd actually was chanting Bootista. Just a month after the debacle that was the 2014 mm. Royal Rumble, Batista was still being presented as a babyface on the road to work, WrestleMania bro. sex letters, going one-on-one -on -one with notable prick Alberto Del Rio. This was the period of time in which WWE fans had decided they were only going to have Daniel Bryan or nothing at all. And this fell into the nothing at all. It's funny seeing that, bro. Like, the fans legitimately, obviously, CM Punk leaving and that kind of changed the WrestleMania card. But the fans, they only cared about one outcome. One outcome. Figure out how to get Daniel Bryan into the main event. Oh, we shit on it. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It was like a it was like a telepathic communication for any city that WWE hosted the show in. Figure out how to get Daniel Bryan into the main event. Oh, we shit on it. <laughs> I love it. Category. It doesn't help that this match was pretty trash, with Batista not looking like he'd been in the ring much for the prior four years. But the fans were also not willing to give it much of a chance. Del Rio wheeled out every dastardly trick in the book to try and get the fans to boo him, including the age-old classic of hobbling to the ring and then pretending he was unable to compete before battering Big Dave with his crutch before the bell. Whatever Del Rio did, they cheered, even launching into a C chant rather than a yes chant at the start of the match. This was followed by, inevitably, more chants for Daniel Bryan. And yep. CM Punk and RVD and Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar, really anyone who wasn't Dave Batista. Number eight, The Bar versus AOP. Survivor Series 2018. It isn't always the live crowd as a whole that can ruin a perfectly good match. Sometimes it can be just one particularly obnoxious person who's determined to draw attention to themselves. Every so often, we see fans' attention distracted by something off camera. Maybe security mm -hmm. or confiscating somebody's sign, maybe a fight's broken out, or as implausible as it might sound, maybe a disgruntled ex-employee has decided to hijack one of your biggest shows of the year. Enzo Amore, a charismatic but controversial figure in pro wrestling, had been released by WWE earlier in 2018 after after some serious sexual assault allegations I think were made I remember against him, this and he moment. reportedly failed to inform the company that he was being investigated. The police later dropped the investigation, and Enzo moved away from wrestling to focus on his music career, or so we thought. Three matches into Survivor Series, as the bar and AOP started a tag team match, Enzo removed the disguise in the first few rows of the crowd and started causing a scene. The fans uh... were visibly distracted for a few minutes as he was ejected from the building and banned from the Staples Center. A We Want Enzo chant even broke out as fans I on the hard cam could be seen this. looking in mass towards the exit rather than at the ring. Luckily, things calmed down and everyone refocused their attention on the match itself, just in time to see AOP's manager, Drake Maverick, wet himself when attacked by the big show. Number seven, yeah. Eddie Guerrero versus Rob Van Dam. Raw, May 27th, 2000. I forgot about that whole situation. That was a real thing. That wasn't, I know some people were thinking, oh, this is part of a storyline. No, that wasn't. He just showed up and uh, granted, he can show up to a show, but obviously WWE doesn't want that because it's going to draw attention to it. it's gonna look like a story angle so that's like yeah get this guy up out of here bro two. What's worse than a fan making a fool of themselves in the crowd? A fan climbing into the ring oh, in the middle of a match. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero made sure one man who did so learned the hard way that Facts. this was a bad idea. Rest it was the main man. event of Monday Night Raw in Edmonton, Alberta, an Intercontinental Championship ladder match with Guerrero defending against Rob Van Dam. And the match was still in its relatively early stages when a random guy did something unbelievably stupid. With RVD down, Guerrero started climbing the ladder towards the belt hanging overhead. Suddenly, he was nearing the top. A bald guy in an Edmonton Oilers jersey appeared from nowhere and pushed the ladder over. Luckily, Eddie saw him in time and left yeah. off, landing on his feet and then immediately swinging at the intruder as yeah. referee Earl Hebner tackled the man to the ground. The whole thing and many others like it can be seen in our list of 10 times wrestling fans invaded the show, so make sure you watch that as well. Nah, that, that in my opinion, that fan deserved every bit of that. I'm not one of those people that are okay with fans hopping the barricade and trying to attack wrestlers. No. No. I... I you pay to see and watch the show you're not allowed to be a part of the show and like in a sense of jumping the barricade and trying to insert yourself in matches and shit no no you deserve to get your ass beat 
So, and usually that's what happens. Number six, Ric Flair versus Nikita Koloff, The Great American Bash, 1985. Oh, we going way back. In the year that Vince McMahon launched WrestleMania, the NWA was already preparing to start up a second annual super show to go alongside Starcade, which had been the first big wrestling show to air widely on closed circuit TV at movie theaters across the United States. Mm. The Great American Bash would now be the summer version of Starcade, and this first edition had a crowd in Charlotte, North Carolina, who were really fired up. In one case, a little too much so. Ric Flair, already a four-time NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, was defending the title against Nikita Koloff, who, playing an evil Russian at the height of the Cold War, mm -hmm. found himself able to draw plenty of heat from audiences all over America. Makes Flair sense. was very much a fan favorite at this point, and things got increasingly tense as Koloff bit, clawed, and cheated his way through the match. Suddenly, close to the end of the contest, a fan charged the ring and tried to tackle Koloff to the mat. He was wow. quickly sent packing, but it clearly threw both wrestlers off. Moments later, Flair botched a top row crossbody, leaping too high and almost landing on his opponent's head. The match continued for a few more moments before the Nature Boy secured the pinfall, but the unexpected intervention from ringside had cast a shadow over the major title defense at the biggest show of the summer. And this is back then when people believed it was all real. Like, they believed the storylines and stuff was actually real. Because at this point, kayfabe was much alive. Like, no one knew that it was all the work. So at this point, people, especially if you were going with some of the political stuff and kind of playing up to that, people believed that shit was real. So they're like, you know, hold on, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> Number five, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor, SummerSlam 2016. If you wanted to put on a great match for a new world championship at a major pay-per-view, Seth Rollins versus a newly debuted Finn Balor is a pretty damn great place mm -hmm. to start. The problem then became that those in attendance that night in Brooklyn did not take kindly to the strawberry jam monstrosity that was the nope. Universal Championship. Balor and Rollins did their best to work through the jeers, but the visceral hatred that the fans had towards this belt was palpable. Yeah. Different variations of that belt sucks chants echoed throughout uh -huh. the Barclays Center, while Seth and Finn were putting on one of the matches of the night. Seth even took to Twitter afterwards to let the Brooklyn crowd know. More important than a title's appearance is uh, what it represents for the men fighting over it. You really let me down tonight, Brooklyn. I mean, I get what Seth was saying at the time, but come on, bro. That shit looked awful. We've gotten used to it now, but that shit well, it's now, it's the blue belt. <laughs> I think the blue belt looks a little bit better in it, just aesthetically wise. You know, we've gotten used to it, but bro, that, that, that shit looked awful, bro. When it first came out, they unveiled it, people were like, what? I'm sure they thought it was going to be a, a better reception, but no, that, that shit was trash, bro. So you can't, I get what he's saying. You should be watching the match and enjoying that. It's not really about the title, but come on, bro. Come on, bro. You you bringing out that belt, the 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 Raspberry Jam belt in Brooklyn? What do you expect? What 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 ex response do you expect the Brooklyn crowd to give you? Just how much they had let him down that night. And yeah, maybe don't distract yourself that much from the awesome match that is taking place before you. But also, goddamn, did this belt ever suck. This match is more remembered for being the site of Finn Balor's main event push ending injury. But as it was happening, all anyone could do was talk about just how much this belt sucked. Facts. Number four, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, oh. WrestleMania 34. After the Daniel Bryan drama in 2014 and the years of fan backlash against John Cena, you would think that WWE would have learned not to try and force a new star down everyone's throat. Yeah. When the fans weren't well, Vince ready didn't. to cheer for them. Wrong! Because Vince McMahon knows what you want more than you know it yourself. Hence, Facts. Roman Reigns. For four consecutive WrestleManias after Brian's victory, the future Tribal Chief was given main event billing in matches of varying quality against Brock Lesnar, Triple H, and The Undertaker. The fan reaction to one or more of these matches could have made the list, but by WrestleMania 34, the fans had really seen enough. Not Facts. just of Reigns, but of Lesnar too. Facts. Lesnar was an attraction people were into for a long time, but then WWE told the fans that Lesnar hated them and wrestling in an attempt to get them to cheer Reigns, something that was never going to happen. And you nope. know what they got? A crowd that couldn't care less during what was supposed to be the biggest match of the year. There were beach balls and people just generally... No, Bro, I... To this day, I've never watched the full match. I've never watched that match full. I watched their WrestleMania 31 match because I was actually pretty good. But that match for WrestleMania 34, I never... And I probably will never watch it in its full entirety because I did not care. I couldn't, I couldn't have cared less. Not giving a f 
The match is a mess of finisher spamming, which can be cool when the people are into it, but on this night, at the end of a seven hour show, they <laughs> sure weren't. Number three, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. WrestleMania oh, 20. Yeah. Some WWE stars like John Cena have said they actually prefer WrestleMania being held in smaller buildings because of how the sound travels compared to a huge stadium with lots of empty space. For as true as that might be, Brock and Goldberg assuredly felt the opposite when they stood toe to toe in the ring at Madison Square Garden at WrestleMania 20. As the show approached, word got out that both Lesnar and his opponent Goldberg were quitting immediately after the match at the granddaddy of them all. And the news had not gone down well, particularly mm -hmm. with the hardest of the hardcore fans that had gathered inside WWE's home base of MSG. G. Instead of this being the dream match it should have been, this was a total nightmare. From yep. the start, the fans shouted, you sold out, and sang na na na, hey hey hey, goodbye, before mm -hmm. breaking out into a chant in favor of their favorite guest referee, Stone Cold Steve yep. Austin, who clearly saw the funny side of the whole situation. Rock and Goldberg didn't. They looked visibly shaken by the reaction as the crowd mercilessly chanted, this match sucks. Goldberg Facts. eventually won, but the only thing the audience liked was when Austin dropped both guys afterwards with Stone Cold Stunners. Yep. At the very <laughs> least, these two can say they eventually had the match this should have been at Mania 13 mm -hmm. years later, but until that happened, this stood as one of the darkest days in both of their careers. Number two, Sheamus versus Randy Orton, Raw, April 8th, 2013. Ah yes, the Fandango crowd. When the Raw after <laughs> Mania crowd wasn't doo doo. Remember that. Some of the less interesting parts of the show, they were shitting on the WWE branded top stars that they were sick of seeing, like in yep. this match. Sheamus and Randy Orton weren't high on the hardcore fans list at the time and were battling it out on this show to see who would get to face the big show after the large program cost them their match with the Shield at Mania the night before. A match no one wanted to see to set up, a match no one wanted to see. Things started with the Ole, 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 Ole mm -hmm. sing song, followed immediately by chants for referee. Mike Kyoto and all three members of the commentary team and various other random names that weren't involved in the match. Facts. When Big Show eventually stormed the ring to knock out both men, the crowd chanted, thank you, Big Show, for bringing the contest to an end before mocking him as he failed twice to throw a commentator's chair into the ring. We are awesome. <laughs> the fans finally concluded, from the looks on their faces, didn't seem that Seamus Orton or Big Show agreed. And number one, Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins, Extreme Rules 2018. It's pretty rare for the Intercontinental title match to headline a pay-per-view and the 30-minute Iron Man match between Rollins and Ziggler seemed to be an attempt to restore the belt's old reputation as the championship where fans could expect to see high work rate and quality mm -hmm. wrestling. For years, fans had been decrying the decline of the title's importance, so you would think the Pittsburgh crowd would have been well up for this, and to start, they were, until they found a lame gag to amuse themselves with instead. I started this list by saying not all of the entries were at the fault of the fans, but this, this was a crowd of fans doing everything they could to ruin a very good match that they should have been happy to have paid to see. You mm -hmm. all know what went wrong. WWE had the audacity to put a clock on the screen to help fans keep track of the time in this Iron Man match. What were they thinking? The crowd stopped paying attention to the match and in started counting down and going Arrgh! at all of the zeros like me are you all actually children oh none of the ones God. on this list bother me even <laughs> in the slightest but this one is just so irritating the city of pittsburgh is lucky wwe ever returned to it after this match and that's our list make sure yeah of course, that you like i this can video. agree with him on that one that one's kind of that one's kind of like all right y'all come on bro it's, it's just it wasn't even like it was a bad match you know what i'm saying it's just like what are you guys doing bro why are you why are you doing that come on bro yeah <laughs> Once again, it fits. Uh, that's. I don't even want to blame the the area they're in. It's like, come on, bro. Come on now. That that one I agree with. Like that's that's dumb. I'm not about to be sitting up there doing. And eh, when the clock hits zero every time, that's just, that's. Come on, just stop it. <laughs> but comment down below. Let me know what other matches that you guys can recall where the fan said, "Screw this. We don't care." We don't want to watch you guys wrestle anymore. So we're going to take over. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.